guys, I might be a little bit late on posting this, I don't really know, but I'm going to be talking about New Year's resolutions. So, if you're seeing this, hopefully, if you're a resolution type of person, you're still sticking to your resolutions. I think most people kind of abandon their resolutions statistically by the end of January, so if you're seeing this, this is your sign to keep going. Um, so I'm not a really big resolution person, but I'm going to tell you a couple things that I would like to kind of work on this year and then give you some ideas and show you some clips of things that you can maybe, you know, work on yourself this year, especially if one of your resolutions is to save money or things like that. So I know kind of one of the points of resolutions is to be something that's super trackable. Basically, a lot of times people say that they want to lose 30 pounds and, you know, there's a very specific beginning and a very specific end for something like that. However, I don't like doing stuff like that because as you're tracking along, it kind of makes me, I don't know, it kind of starts feeling like work after a while. And I don't want my resolutions to feel like work. I want them to feel more like self-growth. So for me, that's just a mindset that doesn't help me, but if it helps you, that's great. So that said, some of the things that I'm going to be working on are to drink more water. Now, I'm not going to be specifically like counting how much water I drink each day and tracking it because that gets tedious and that's something that just like isn't going to help me. However, I'm just going to kind of try to consciously remember to drink more water. Another resolution kind of a resolution, I guess, is to get into grad school. So I talked in another video about how I am going to try to apply for my master's. I've been out of school for a lot of years, um, 12 years out of college, and then I did start a master's program like way back, you know, actually literally 11 years ago, but it didn't work out. So I'm going to try to do another one now that I'm older and I have kind of developed more of what I want and this is kind of getting into another resolution which is basically like only work on based on my expectations excuse me something I'm in contact I don't know that eye is kind of like fuzzy so if I'm looking weird that's why but so it kind of builds into my other resolution about to <sighs> We'll see how this works. So I'm kind of building on my other resolution to kind of basically go on my own expectations. So for a lot of my life, I've kind of done what I've been told. You know, I was told to go to college, major in a certain thing. Now, I will say I didn't major in a certain thing that I was told to major in. I majored in psychology. I was told to major in business. But regardless, um, I was told to basically just like get a job, which I did. I have like an open job. Um, but it's not fulfilling. And then I was told, hey, you'd be really good at being a teacher. Maybe you should be a teacher. So I did start my uh, master's program in elementary education. And I did that just because everyone told me I would be good at it. And everyone told me that I should do it. And I was good at it. And I did like it. But it wasn't teaching elementary was like not my calling. So basically my point is I've spent a lot of time doing what everyone else told me to do or what people said that I would be good at and just kind of fulfilling everyone else's expectations of me. So now that I'm older and I've had time to really develop who I am and do a lot of thinking, I think I um, am at a much better place in my life to apply to grad school and for something that I personally actually want to do and something that will be fulfilling to me personally. Don't let other people tell you what you should or shouldn't be doing because um, that's just kind of them projecting their expectations and whatever onto you and everyone's different so don't feel bad um, and just taking off the weight of other people's expectations is something that can't be taken lightly. Um, I would like to read more books this year. Last year for 2020 I wanted to read 20 books. I don't think I did that. I'm not sure how many I read. It was something in the teens I think maybe like 13. It was kind of a low number. So I'm not going to try to set a specific number of books for myself this year, but it is something that I want to keep in mind of, you know, maybe try to read 20 books this year again, 21 maybe for 2021, but just kind of like read a lot more books. I did read a lot of books in the beginning of the year last year, and then I kind of just like faded away at the end of the year. Um, I did start doing some other things. Basically, I started doing some online learning courses and um, some other kind of things that fulfilled me. But I did kind of drop off my little resolution to read as many books as I wanted to. So that's something that I'm going to try for a goal again this year is to read books or at least read consistently throughout the year. Um, another thing that I would really like to do is to learn another language. It seems super hard to kind of teach yourself a language, especially as an adult. I took five years of Spanish in school, um, eighth grade through high school. I did not continue in college. I do feel like I remember an okay amount of it, though, which is kind of cool. 
Um, I was able to kind of get by when we went to Ecuador. I certainly can't carry a conversation with somebody, um, but I can like ask basic questions and do basic answers and kind of get by as a tourist. Um, I thought about maybe building on my Spanish skills, especially because where I live, that's like a useful language to have, but I think that I might want to go into like global affairs, international relations for my master's degree is most prudent for me to learn French, especially because that's like the language of diplomacy, that's the second language of the United Nations, that's the language of a lot of African countries, and we'll see how it works out. And then I would just like to continue with my charitable stuff, especially on this channel, maybe make videos a little bit more regularly. Um, I'm not going to make exercise or weight goals or anything like that because that ends up really feeling like work like I was talking about at the beginning of the video. Um, I have been getting back into exercise over the last month or so. Well, actually no, probably since the end of November 2020. So I would just like to continue to build on that. My battery literally died while I was talking. Um, basically what I was saying though is that I'm not going to make myself a goal of like lose this many pounds or run this many miles or whatever because I'm the type of person that if I fail at the goal one week I'll get super discouraged and I won't want to continue on the goal through the rest of the year if that makes sense. So my goal is to just kind of like overall be healthier, drink water, exercise, continue what I'm already doing, etc. And then there's some other things that I would like to do that are definitely a lot more like, um, I don't want to say they would take more effort, maybe I'll share another time, but anyway. Something that was easy for me to stop spending money on was getting my nails done. Honestly, I never got my nails done a lot, literally like twice a year right now they're not super done because, yeah. I have not spent any money on my hair. What you see is a hundred percent natural. I haven't gotten a haircut since November 2019, which was right before I went on vacation to App to Kenya. Um, so no, it's definitely a lot longer than it used to be. It is a hundred percent natural color. I really do like my natural color. I've never really had a huge desire to change my hair color. I've, you know, gotten highlights and stuff a couple times. But anyway, I even when I get my hair done, I'm really really low maintenance I basically get my hair cut twice a year and I just like walk into a family haircut like a discount haircut type place that costs 15 20 bucks I leave a five dollar tip and I move on I do not spend a lot of money on my hair and I mean I think a lot of people maybe value getting their hair done but it's just not something that I value and lucky for me it's a really easy way to to save money. Now the reason it's been extra long since I got a haircut is because basically, you know, going by my six months, the time I would have gotten a haircut would have been May 2020, but obviously because of COVID and everything, um, everything was closed down, couldn't really get a haircut, so I just basically continued letting my hair grow, and then I started thinking that I've always wanted to donate my hair, and maybe this is like a really good opportunity, really good time to do it. Um, so I'm just letting it grow a little bit longer because why not? And I'm still not super okay with going to get my hair cut. So once it grows long enough for me to, you know, get it cut about 8 inches and then still be okay with the length, then I will go get it cut, super cheap, probably spend 20 bucks on it, and we'll go from there. A couple years ago, I gave up um, buying coffee out. Now every once in a while, I will treat myself if I'm out or whatever, but I make coffee with my old $20 drip coffee maker. I drink cheap coffee, the Cafe Bustello or whatever. I have a coffee cup that I carry around with me, obviously with a top. I bring my own coffee to work every day. This year I've been working from home because COVID. But a couple of years ago, I was buying coffee every morning at work and I realized I was spending about 10 bucks a week, which is 40 bucks a month. And that's, you know, not insignificant. It's, you could certainly buy something better with that. So I started bringing my own coffee and I pretty much have not looked back since then. Um, I mean, same thing goes for eating and drinking. <laughs> obviously want to treat yourself every once in a while but certainly cooking at home is just so much better i also stopped buying lunch at work i continued buying lunch at work once every once in a while but it was not something i did regularly i started packing my own lunch taking leftovers with me maybe i'll buy lunch once a week on a friday when i'm like super exhausted for the week and i didn't feel like packing a lunch in the morning but that was also definitely a big money saver. I know a lot of people's resolutions is always to like eat better, eat healthier, and that's a really easy way to 
do that is to pack your lunch and bring it with you. Um, and then I wrote down a couple other things that people seem to spend money on that is like not super worth it to me is designer clothes. I don't wear anything designer. I actually, I go to Goodwill. I've made videos on this channel. I don't have, I have one like designer purse from years and years and years ago. So it's certainly like not in style or anything and I don't really use it. And I basically, the purse that I use every day is 17, I bought it for $17 when I was on vacation at Galapagos. So, and I get more compliments on that purse than any other purse I've ever owned. And then I think a lot of people um, spend money on gym memberships that they don't necessarily use. And I mean, I know it really depends on the type of area that you live in, but it is definitely pretty easy to maybe like go for a walk outside. Again, I'm fully aware that not everyone lives in a place safe enough to do that, but if you do, you don't need a gym membership. You can go for a walk outside, you can go for a jog. Now, if you are really into weights and going to the gym, then certainly a membership is worth it for you, but if you're just going to get on the treadmill or the elliptical or something, it might be worth it for you to buy a treadmill, which is what I did, or like buy a rowing machine, which is what I did. My rowing machine was like $300 on Amazon. Um, my treadmill was kind of expensive, but it's definitely worth it for me because I do use it frequently and I'm not paying for a gym membership all that time if that makes sense so if you have the money to invest up front then that's certainly something you can look into or kind of look onto Craigslist or find a cheaper treadmill. I used a cheap one for a lot of years. I got it at Walmart. It was really good for me. I trained for half marathons on it so something else to look into if you're looking at to where to cut expenses. So anyway those are my resolutions, resolution ideas. Please um, like, comment, subscribe, and let me know in the comments below if you're a resolution kind of person and what resolution you made.